Hello and welcome to Dells Gaming and this is from the depths and I'm on a little airfield which was developed in the map on one of the um, Onyx Watch resource areas and with today we're going to look at the new fleet air arm and air force which is going to go up against some of the white flyers so the theme I've taken here is been from the V bombers which was um, just after the Second World War the British government put out a proposal to then the main uh, British aerospace industries for a new bomber medium bomber to carry the nuclear warheads out uh, to bomb the cities as you can imagine and it was designed to be at the time we were just after the second world war this is late 40s early 50s high altitude and bombs were big um they weren't the little things we have nowadays these were chunky sized bombs these these bombers would only possibly carry about two or three even though they were much bigger than the large bombers of the time um so what we've got here is my sort of interpretation of the free um, system so we start with the um, the Valiant which I think was Hawker Sidley now the Valiant was a fairly it was the first one to come out online and it was a fairly conventional layout with a high level straight leading edge wing but it did have some um, Oops, just going into night time but um, it did have some level of sweep on the front now one other commonality for all of these English V bombers and early early bomber design was they all used um, wing root or conformal engines at the time in the English um, aerospace industry it was seen as that was a cleaner lines and would give better performance which is true um, some of the problems with this particular design is maintenance being in the wing roots maintenance of an engine was more difficult and also as was proven in i think it was possibly it was either a, a valiant or possibly a victor was that uh, an engine fire could potentially take out both engines rather than just a single one um, the the americans with the b47 actually took the idea uh, specifically Boeing actually designed it with the engines inside and they actually said no we want them outside on pods um, for ease of maintenance and uh, safety um, actually they still had problems because they put the engines together in the same pod which still made them more vulnerable but um, yeah it was easier to maintain anyway that is a commonality of the the British aircraft at this time so the Valiant here what we've got is this is going to be designed purely as a high altitude bomber it's got a whole load of downward firing uh, bombs in the bottom bay um i did have problems i did try to launch um just have gravity launched on rail bombs but i really had problems launching out missiles in the in the as a bombs in the current environment unless they could actually have exit off the back so um we've had to have I've had to create them as like effectively a downward firing bomb with a, a small jet engine just to eject them out of the bomb bay so that's the Valiant now the next one was the uh, one of my favorite was the Avro Vulcan so the Vulcan was a fairly unique design uh, I would say unique it was it didn't follow convention it had this bigger delta wing uh, design which is what I sort of followed in this particular design idea um, and again the wing root engines had some nice big four um, uh, wing root engines I haven't put front openings on this which maybe I should have done just to for styling I might go and change that maybe in a future version um, but the main design ethic was the the big delta wing shape now the actual V uh, Vulcan did last quite some time which maybe we'll go into a little bit but it was because of the big wing route when the bombs changed to be um, the sky bolt I think it was and there was one of a blue bolt which were long-range standoff nuclear missiles 
Um, there was actually a design for the Avro to carry up to six of them, but in normal it would have carried two to four of them, which I've modelled here with some large um, missiles. It also does have a small internal bomb bay, and this is going to go in at low to mid level and basically go in and launch these big old missiles at the target as a group of Vulcans to try and take them out on the first pass effectively. Um, it's also pretty fast um, as a, an aircraft um, using the you know, normal jet engines and not using the fuel burning ones. And then the final one of the V bombers is the Handley Page Victor, which was the last of the bombers to be um, brought into service. And these were all in service. And it was the most advanced of them. Now, there's one bit I um, haven't pulled over in the design cube, which I'll go through in a second. But the main facts are um, it's got, again, the wing root engines, similar to the Valiant. It also had this sharp nose um, area and also the bulge under the front, which I've made as the radar and the front wheel um, area. And for some reason, the front wheels aren't deploying on here, but uh, not worry about that at the moment. Um, and also the rear tail is a sort of like an inclined V. Again, I tried to make it functional um, at the same time as trying to follow the design. You. Now, one of the advantages of the Victor is it had a very big bomb bay, which which um, allowed it to carry um, nuclear missiles as well as quite a large bomb load, which which I have set up on this. Um, it also had a very strong fuselage design. Now, one area I'd like to change is it did have a very big swept wing, and I've created a straight trailing edge where it should have more of a sweep in here which I may go and redo um, possibly in a second I've just noticed that really so operationally just to go through a couple of things now the the Valiant was possibly although the shortest lived had quite a good career it was the first and only of the V bombers to operationally carry and launch a nuclear bomb during the testing in the South Pacific and the Australia in the South Pacific. The other, I think the Victor was used for measuring, but the Valiant was the uh, main um, bomb carrier at that time to, to launch it from high altitude. It also did conventional bombing in the uh, Suez um, Canal incident. Um, bombing some of the airfields, Egypt's airfields, and actually there was a story about that, uh, maybe because I didn't realise, the air traffic control at the airfield actually gave the Vic Valiant's um, uh, vectors to, to come into the airfield, because they thought they were aircraft about to land, which was a bit strange at the time. The Vulcan um, ne also did have operational use, it was again um, dropped conventional warheads in the Falkland Wars in the 1980s so it did last quite uh, a long time into the 80s um, and was and whereas the Valiant was I think taken out of service in the 70s due to um, structural design fatigue in the wings etc um, which we'll go into in a minute, that none of the others actually carried any nuclear bombs, obviously, into wars, we would have heard about that. And the role of the bomber changed after a, a few um, changes in the bombing tactics, which we'll go into with the other the final plane here, um, to a low level bombing instead of high altitude. And the design of the Valiant just basically was not strong enough to handle the low level whereas the the uh, delta wing of the Vulcan meant it could do low level maneuvers quite adequately and, and survive them and be nice and strong. The Victor uh, never saw operational use with conventional nuclear weapons but did become a good tanker with the large vo voluminous uh, bomb bay it was converted over to be a tanker for the bombers and the other aircraft and even saw service in the Iraq war 1991 um, 
as a tanker for tornadoes etc another RVF um, aircraft going into Iraq so it's actually lasted longer operationally than any of the other um, V bombers so final aircraft is my little fight now which is sort of based on the lightning uh, the British electric lightning the main design cue was, was the stacked engines obviously I have just got two I've got more but it had stacked engines making a very long but thin fuselage it hasn't got a hollow nose so I've I'm taking the idea of I'm basing this on a design of the for the fleet air arm never built but the fleet air arm had a solid nose and sw and a variable um, wing geometry version of the lightning so the lightning came into service in the 50s I think it was about 1957 with the RAF and was also used in a number of other forces um, including some of the um, including some other countries um, its main it was mainly an interceptor to go and intercept enemy forces at very um, high altitude or I say very high altitude. it actually had some records and this is one of the changes in bombing in that um, this could get the lightning could get up to its initial operating altitude of about 36,000 feet in about three minutes it would then go into a mark number and climb even higher and at the time it was undocumented but this did test intercepts on U-2 spy planes at over 60,000 feet so it was going up and effectively intercepting U-2s out of bases in the UK uh, on test flights effectively and it sort of proved the fact that basically you couldn't hide a bomber even at high altitude from the modern uh, fighters let alone missiles um, there was reports that I think they had got this plane in a ballistic course up to somewhere like um, 80 something odd that 80 something thousand feet um, it wasn't a state and level flight um, but it was high enough to say look you know you're not gonna hide from height anyway in the game I'm using this as my little fighter interceptor so if we now go to the map um, I think the lightning hoods here have actually decided to come in and attack some of our um, areas because they have declared war against us and that's gonna be a little bit um, uh, unusual on how I'm gonna handle that because we've got some laser armed ships um, so we're gonna have to find a way to take these on and what I think I might have to do is take in my um, airships they've mostly got the best chance against the um, lasers of the lightning hoods so we're possibly taking those in but the bombers if I just uh, take all of these back out of play the bombers are going to attack this area down here they're gonna go on a long flight and take on the, the the area 200 with the support of the Grand Fleet and then take on this um, the fishbone beach and the fish bone springs but first of all I've got to um, I'm don't know how the lightning hoods have got here but I'm gonna have to take out these forces first I think um, however I can <laughs> Thank you. 
one operational issue with the bombers and the fighters is they are they don't have very much power creation internally they rely heavily on batteries so their distance is based upon the energy available in, inside them the victors can produce a fair bit of um, uh, power but most of the others I've only just got enough to basically fly um, at a most minimal level um, so you need bases to act as refueling points so at the moment I've used Dell's Grand Fleet and that's producing energy for the uh, squadrons so what we're going to do is we're going to initiate attack on this 200 using the aircraft just to see how they do perform um, and then we will go into the attack on the village and the resource area and the enemy's got a primarily a um, fleet composed of ships a few flyers um, a couple of large ones I think there harpoon let's just see what other flyers they got and a wrecker nothing too much so we'll have a couple of lightnings come in but I think we'll do this as purely a, um, a air, air fleet uh, attack so we'll bring in some of the areas let me just sort out my initial team Well, that little battle against the White Flayers fleet was a little inconclusive, um, but did point out uh, lack of energy and ammo primarily. So I have modified the aircraft a little bit to give them a, a bit more... didn't have any ammo processors to give them a bit more ammo production. And we'll give them a go now against this fleet and the fish boat bone village and see how they do otherwise it's not too bad their energy is a problem um but it's not it's not something that we can't um overcome for want of a better word so we're going to move everything up into attack positions um as much as we can we're going to have the and i made some changes to some of the aircraft the way that they attack their attack ranges so we'll see how that has an effect i think the valiants did quite well um and actually the lightnings on the ground attack but the uh the other ships just kept on um running out of energy and ammo to to reload the uh weaponry so we'll give them another go with the um i also i think that possibly need to bring less in at a time so keep some of them back rather than immediately attacking every single time so the white flares have got quite a large fleet in here with a couple of very powerful anti-air group here as well which is going to be potentially a problem so um i think we will be bringing in a lot of the lightnings at first with um against anti-air i'm thinking maybe victors and then the um, valiants
and that battle was once again a little inconclusive um, the jets get spread out a lot and it took a while to took down take down those charidons and in that time the ships base uh, the aircraft basically run out of energy so the idea is okay but in a, a longer engagement the aircraft don't have any way to replenish their energy stores which is where they need a carrier or some sort of base to act as the ammo sup um, energy supply in this case for the um, uh, engines so we may have to find some sort of hmm, air flying carrier maybe maybe a heli carrier or something like that which it's pure it's purely there just to act as a base and energy production which it then gives out to the ships so that's a potential possibility um, I might look at for for these air fleets but in the meantime we have the um, lightning hoods have decided to send in a wing against our um, forces down the south so we have got a we are now against two fronts now this is a time time for our, our Neeland defense platforms to see if they are worth worth all of the points I have given them now unfortunately they are low on materials as you can see so I'm hoping that we can uh, take out the enemy at long range Well, our def forces did defend against the attack, so that's a good sign. Although I feel that those attacks could get stronger. Um, we do have three of them, and hopefully we have a fourth one which is almost built to protect this area. The uh, other just quick thing to say, I put them all in this same sort of close together area uh, purposefully so that they would support each other so anyone basically attacking any of these squares ends up having to take three of these on um any one time but they they survived that's something i can say um but they need a little bit more resources which hopefully this area will pump out over time and uh, they'll be able to um uh, get some more resources for, for for defensively to repair themselves um, oh, I've just leveled up again so 
got one more force to bring in we've got to go through the lightning hoods but we do have our wolf pack force which i'm going to bring in to take out this area here uh, this weight flyers area and it's some new um subs as well as the stealth subs as well as a few other uh, a new sub which we'll see it's a development of a of an existing one um, and we'll bring in the Imperial Navy to clear out this 15 of the Lightning Hoods before we get in there. Uh, looks like we've got another nice little area here we can quickly um, get some resources from. But we will also have to bring in our, our updated carrier group um, into these areas to uh, basically start taking them out. But we will have to... Uh, within reasonable time think about the lightning hoods and anti-laser defenses although our Neeland defense platforms are working so far uh, that might not be forever anyway it's a inconclusive battle uh, this <laughs> on this one a bit of a mix um, the the aircraft to be honest are not as exciting shall we say uh, because as i would have liked um they have won against o overwhelming forces every battle they have been the smaller force and they have won but it's not conclusive i i could either bring more of the planes in um against the uh, the, the the enemy or as i say i think i might build a carrier of some description to act, act as the um mothership that provides all of the power for them and i think we'll we'll create an airfield here to suck up these resources but also act as a a base for the um for the air forces so we'll possibly um move this airfield either move this airfield or um make a new one in this base and scrap this one but we'll we'll uh, look at that as a as a potential bit off camera as always leave comments down below in the comments things i'm looking for is um you know the anti-laser we've done a load of tests so some suggestions maybe for an uh, uh, a mothership for my air forces but until then until next time as always Keep playing the game and have fun.